I very much support the idea that runners should like wear whatever they want. They want that if I'm wearing my little short shorts after I run, and you problem with it, it's your problem. Then I see a man walking around the mall with tight tights and his little bulge sticking out. I'm like, yo, for the love of God, because there are no decency left. I very much so. What you guys just heard <laughs> was was fast Kate, Kate Grace, hilarious 1500, 800 meter uh runner for Nike. Having some controversial words, bro. Hot, uh, hot, hot topic, hot, hot topic, hot. Not not the store, not the store, but people are definitely walking around hot topic, Hollister, uh, pay less, uh, build a bear. Uh Kate Gray saw people like that walking around with men, walking around with short shorts, walking around with biker you shorts. Know, he was around walking with- around with tights on, tights on, no shorts over, bulge sticking out at the grocery store. Is is that too much, Aaron? Do you support? Are you support? Because she says she's very much in support of runners walking around with running clothes after their runs. I don't even know if I support that. Like, put that away. You know what I mean? Hey, man, walking around with your bulge out, that, that's, a, that's a lot. But we talked about this a little bit before air. And, you know, I really, like, thought of, I really thought about this. And it really, it depends on two things. How long ago did you work out? Mm-hmm. And the second is where is the place that you're in your your workout clothes? Now, the funny thing about this is I just came from Trader Joe's and I saw this girl in there. She was <laughs> she was wearing a sports bra and a little spandex. Right. We were, <laughs> what did I tell you this two days ago? That girl. I didn't think people out. actually did that. I was like, no, nah, people don't be doing that. Like, that's weird. Like, I'm sorry. In my opinion, I'm like, that is a little weird. You know, like I wouldn't be going after I work out. You're not gonna catch me with short shorts and and a tank top or whatever. You know, shopping sweaty, shopping. You know, at the grocery store. But but it depends. What if and Trader Joe's? This is a, actually this could be a whole podcast. Trader Joe's is a unique unique place because I think if you if you're wearing that outfit, you you're coming from you going to Seven Eleven right after you work out. That's, that's normal. I don't think how much that's, stuff a, that's are you get, how much are you getting from Trader Joe's though? Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you go on a whole, if you going on a whole shopping spree, because I was talking to you, Aaron, I was all like, bro. So if I went to go do a workout at the track, I'm bringing an extra shirt. I'm bringing some sweats. Definitely, if it's summertime. I mean, yeah. Honestly, even if it's the end, because at the end of my workout, I sweat a lot. Naturally, a lot of people sweat a lot. Like my shorts are gonna be drenched. Like you feel me? Yeah, no, me too. Me too. That's why I, I think that's nasty. I would. So like, that's why I, I don't do it. I'm putting on some sweats afterwards. I'm gonna put on a shirt. You feel me? Sometimes I won't do that if I gotta run in to get a 7-Eleven, get a Gatorade real quick. You know, get not. I'm gonna get some body armor real quick. Maybe get some Prime. Shout out KSI. You feel me? Real quick. <laughs> but like, I'm not. I'm not gonna go on a full Target run and get some bananas, apples, some some meat, all this type of stuff. Like, come on, man. Like, take a shower first. Bathe yourself. I'm gonna, There's kids I'm gonna at least just with the, to the to the guy, back to the dude in the tights walking around grocery shopping. K, I no agree bones. with you. That's a that's too much. That's too much. Put some shorts over that. There's kids walking around. That's a little bit too much. To the to the homegirl I saw today in Trader Joe's. I'm on the fence because. If she was wearing those, if she if she worked out three hours ago and she was still in that at Trader Joe's, I think that's a little strange. I think that's a little strange. I'm not gonna lie. But if she, but if she just came, you know, let's say the gym was right down the street and she came in there just to pick up some Trader Joe cookies or something, and then leave, that's cool. But if she just out there grocery shopping in that after she had done a whole workout for, you know, was just walking around smelly. You know what I'm saying? But not Honestly. and not putting those long shirt on or nothing. I think that's kind of I think that's I don't know, man. I, I I don't know. I really think it depends on for me, it's about where are you going? I think there's certain places where it's just like, yo, that's weird. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how long have you had those clothes on? Those are the two things that 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 really um do it for me. You gotta look at look at that. I think we need to come down to the distinction that running clothes, spandex. If it's if it's spandex, compressions, running shorts, or whatever, that's basically underwear. 
But I think we need to come down to that. <laughs> you're walk, you're walking around in your undergarments. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. That's that's underwear, bro. I don't got like that's, yeah. that's that's how I'm feeling. That's underwear. Like put some shorts on. Like it ain't that it ain't that hard. Put some shorts on. And honestly, Aaron, there's a chance this girl she didn't come from the gym. Like, honestly, she may have just walked out like that. Not saying there ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that's 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 real life. That's the world that we live in. So I'm just saying. But uh. Yeah, you feel me? That's that's just. I, I don't know, man. Shout out, we gotta everywhere. get Kate Grace. I gotta get Kate Grace on the podcast. Kate, we we need you to come on and and let us let us know like where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? Without further ado, I'm Joshua Potts, Mr. Possible, always the brother with the same mother, Aaron Potts, Super Hot Potts, and you're watching and listening to your favorite two black runners every single two black two. We're back after a little short, little week break. It was a busy, busy week. A bunch of stuff happened in the running world. Track is back. Um, wow. A lot of cross, wait, uh, cross country, high school cross country popping off. Shoot, CIM for a shout out to everybody. Anyone listening that race CIM this weekend, shout out to you. Um, TRE, the the running event, just came from that uh, in Austin, Orlando, USATF meetings. We're rolling, man. 2024 is right around the corner. That means the Olympics are right around the corner. The Olympic trials are right around the corner. Shoot, how how you feeling about this right now, bro? How you feeling about where we at? You about to you about to go to New York soon? Like, yo, I don't know. A lot's happening. Yeah, bro, I'm just trying to finish school, man. I'm trying to finish school. I got two more weeks. I got one more indoor. I'm not indoor. I got one more in-person class of undergrad this Wednesday. I got two more Zoom classes of undergrad this Thursday and next Thursday. I'm just trying to finish school, bro. But super hype, super hype, bro. I can't even like I didn't even realize that like track is definitely back. This is like BU signify track being back. But before we get there, bro, we got cross country. It's cross country here. It's the first two weeks of December, Aaron. And that's one of my two, the first two weekends of December are some of my favorite weekends because we get in NXN and then we get Foot Locker Nationals, all attentions on high school cross country. And it's always, always exciting. We had NXN this past weekend, a really, really muddy NXN too. Puddles, rain, basically lakes in the tire, in the, in the course. It was windy and everything. And we saw huge upsets. I feel like surprising wins. Addie Rensing Hine won the women's race. And then JoJo Jordan won the boys race and a muddy NXN. Addie marched down as Elizabeth Leachman, who really had a lead about like a hundred meters at one point. She was moving. JoJo Jordan really made a big move with 1K to go. The guys were together the entire time, but JoJo just took it away at the end of it. Like, but they're talking about this mud and everything. I've seen a lot of commentary, people talking about it. This is that real cross country. This is what the real cross country is. The mud, I've seen people slipping, you feel me, falling down, they, people doing mud slides afterwards in the race. There's a big puddle, like literally, like ankle deep, ankle deep, not I mean ankle, sock deep, like crew sock deep that these kids were running through at one point in the race. Like, is that real cross country? Is, is all that, is that, is that real cross country, Aaron? I feel like a little I'm bit. From, I'm, I'm from California, bro. I'm from California and I ran the 800 in the mile when I was in high school. I don't care about no cross country, man. I don't care about no cross country, man. But oh, the worst cross country course I ever ran in my life was, um, it was my senior year of college and um, on the big island in Hawaii. Beautiful, beautiful. But if you don't know in Hawaii on the big island, it rains every single day. It's like tropical rain every single day. And the course, I just remember warming up on that course, laughing, like, no way we're about to run in this. Like, how how do you run fast in this? Like, like people were slipping and falling on the turns in the races, bro. Like, everyone ran like three minutes slower than what they would usually 
run. So like your point, like, is that cross country or is it just like a tough, tough mutter? Is it, it's a tutter mutter, become, tougher, tutter mutter, bro. It's when does it become mutter. a Spartan race? When does it become a Spartan race? You know, just like we're talking about lines being drawn today, I guess. But hey, shout out to Addy though. You know, it does cross country runners. I will say you got to be tough and you got to be able to face the elements. I always felt like track was the track was like, I mean, I guess you could depend on how you looked at it. You could say that the track is the equalizer or you could say the cross country is the equalizer because there's all these things on the course, but then track is built to run fast. Cross country is built to just like, you know, get through it, you know, you know, um, I think so, it definitely it, it makes it makes it entertaining in a way, you know, like seeing all the mud and stuff. But I don't know. I, I like I like to see kids run fast. I like to see even competition. I don't like to see no mud puddles. But like you said, like we from we from California, so like I guess where our view is definitely skewed. Like our hardest, our most memorable memorable course. Like if it rains just a little bit, like they're gonna put you on the roads. They have a rain course for you to run on the roads. Like we don't run through that mud. So like, which is kind of wild. You know what I mean? So maybe we don't even know what cross country is, bro. Or maybe we just doing it the right way. Like maybe we doing it like the right way for like people don't have to run through mud and stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like that's normal. That's normal to be honest. Can't like we having deers to... on the course, man. Tackling kids, bro. Yeah, Remember come on, deer? bro. That was crazy. <laughs> Like I don't why do I I don't want my seventh man being tempted to do a cannonball in this puddle. Like, come on, man. Like, you feel me? Like that's, that's too that's, much, bro. You kicked off the team if you do that. That's what be happening. That's what be happening in this type of things. But like how you said, Addy Ritzenheim, shout out to her, shout out to everybody that competed, especially from California. Cause we've seen a lot of these people, especially Santiago High School. They come from our league, the big eight, Corona, just down the street from where we grew up. Riley Blade, Koji, uh, Braylon, and all and all those uh, people. Shout out to y'all. We ran amazing and excited what y'all going to do next year. But I'm excited for Addie Ritzenheim too, bro. Uh, she's the daughter of Dathan Ritzenheim and Kaylin Todebush, who were first and fifth at the 2000 first Foot Locker Nationals. Their daughter, I Addie, just won the 2023 NXN National Championships and led Niwat to runner-up trophy. And she's only a sophomore. Last year, bro, she ran 1021 in the two mile. And also she ran 457, 457 in the mile as a freshman. Mm -hmm. She's now a sophomore, NXN champion. Is this the start of Ritzenheim domination? Dude, I don't know if it's a start of domination. There's so many good um, girls in high school. We talk about Riley Blade out of Santiago, you know, from our hometown. We talk about Sadie Englehart. She was just at Foot Locker this weekend. The girl who won, uh, Kiara Daly, she was only a so only a sophomore, and she was looking good, bro. Like I'm like, man, can this girl win Foot Locker? So it's just crazy that I just feel like on the girl side, you know, the past couple of years, the top person hasn't been a senior. So. I don't I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We got to talk about uh, the home homegirl. So Sophia Rodriguez, she's on a freshman now. Yeah, we seen her at Nike Indoor Nationals when she was in the eighth grade. I saw that there was an NXN uh, girl that was in the eighth grade. So I think she finished like top 10, too. So, yeah, I can't say that. Addy, I can't say that Addy's just going to dominate everyone because the field is just so good. And whenever someone comes in, like a Sadie who, you know, puts the bar so high, it seems like the girls just go and they go, go match. And they're not afraid. They go after it and they just step up to that level. So what I do know is that, you know, the boys been getting a lot of attention the past couple of years with Leo and Lex, but there are some amazing high school girls right now doing crazy things. And I think this year you're really going to hear like those stars, you know, start coming, coming to life for sure. It, yeah. It's going to be really interesting. And I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be domination. That's definitely for effect and for us to debate about it. You know what I mean? But I do think that this is a, a big start for 
Addy. And I think even when we saw her like last year, well, earlier this year when she raced at Indoor Nationals, I remember people talking to her, to, talking to us about her and just saying like, oh, she's a great competitor. Like she's intelligent and how she races. And like, this is her first year as a freshman. And like, I think she's just getting, I think she's diving deeper and deeper into the sport. And maybe there's even just that knowledge that Dathan really has as well that's gonna has help to. her just big time you know what I mean like she probably has we just talked to Nixon in our last podcast how he's been in it for five years and has all these amazing people and sees such great athletes like she got Olympians around her she got Nike pros and just at arm's reach she got she got a uh, homeboy she got Alicia Martin you feel she me? Got at least at least cranny went to Niwa bro she got, you know, you know how many people she got in her ear to like go through races and the confidence that builds. It also brings on some pet pressure, but like if she can unlock unlock all of that, what like the sky is definitely the limit. So hats off to her. It's going to be exciting to see. But like how you said, the girls are insane right now. I feel like one of the best girls in the country, Jane Hindegren, the one yeah. that, that we've seen, she, I, I think she ended up with an injury or something, but like she wasn't at NXN. And I feel like she's someone that could but ten, that could have been like the runaway favorite for this too. So it, it's going to be exciting. High school cross country is always exciting. NXN was last week, this Saturday, we're going to be at Foot Locker Nationals, our fourth time going to Foot Locker, Aaron. We, it would have been five, but COVID, you feel me? It, knocking, knocking down everything. But our fourth time at Foot Locker, this time we're teaming up with Hoka, giving you guys exclu- exclusive coverage as well. Aaron, what are you hyped for about Foot Locker this weekend, bro? Man, I would say this now what you say, like, yeah, four years, and that was really like one of the big, you know, first things we ever did uh with running report and two black runners. So, and and I really did, I'm pretty sure if I look at my journal last year, I wrote like that I wanted us to be, it was one of my goals for us to be um a part of the Foot Locker programming. So just wanna you know, say congratulations. We're quick pat us both on the back for hey, really, let's go. you know, you know, I got to give the um, glory to God too for that. That was really something that I always wanted to was to be a part, to be a part of the programming. So it's just a little baby step, but um, no, I'm, I'm excited. Like going to the West regional this weekend was, was cool and interviewing, um, interviewing the kids. And I think it's cool that, the West region kids, they're going to see us again um, back there. And I remember just when we interviewed uh, Kiara and how she was like, oh, I'm so bad at interviews. And I was just like kind of trying to tell her, like trying to coach her up, like, nah, you good, fam. Like you can mess up. We're not here to make you look bad. So I always just take it as a privilege to be in these superstars lives um, so early and be able to give them that good, ex- that good experience with media. So they understand or they can have like an idea of what it should be like, how they should be, how they should be treated. So when it's something bad happens, they don't just think, Oh, you know, that is just, just how it is. So yeah, I guess I'm, I'm guess I'm just excited, excited that I get to be a, a part of athletes journey in a, in some, in somehow, you know, you talked about it getting the podcast track is back. And it's funny that we're talking about BU because after NCAAs, we had a question. Who had the bigger performance, Graham Blanks or Parker Valby? Well, Aaron, we're in that same situation. (laughs) Who had the bigger performance? Because Parker Valby first went out in the 5K and she was the the first woman in NCAA history to break 15 minutes, running a 14.56. That makes, running, running 14 to 56, amazing. Then Graham Blanks afterwards came back with a rebuttal runs 1303 to break the NCAA record of 1308. Grants a 1303 to do that. Both are cross country Ooh. champions. Now both of our indoor 5000 meter NCAA cross country champions, but I got to ask you just like cross bro, what was the bigger performance? Bro, I got to check and see like what is the indoor American record, bro? No, when I was really Whoa. looking at it at least 1447 1447 i think 33 1433 is indoor woman american record dang that's that's pretty fast 
And that's where the least cranny ran that at BU in 2022. I think it goes to, I would give it the grand blanks and not just because last time we were saying Parker Valby, but I think this really, because uh, Graham Blanks did that in the process of also beating Kai Robinson, which I think is really big because Graham also finished second to Kai Robinson in the outdoor 5,000 meter championship uh, this past season and track. And so be able to beat Kai and like Kai also broke Lavi Lang's record running at 1306. So for Graham Blakes to go out there, run a 1303, uh, I was looking at it just the other times of this year that 1303 considering indoor and outdoor times that would make grand blanks number six the number six american in the u.s right now Dang. in 23 that would put him only people that ran faster than him is paul chlimo sean mcgordy joe klecker grant this Fisher, whole year and woody, and woody kincaid yeah so like that means that this dude once we get to the olympic trials like he has firmly put himself in the conversation to be in that race for the Olympic trials in the 5K. So, like, really good on Graham Blanks. Parker Valby's definitely there, too. She would be, like, the number eight American. But I really, like, if Graham Blanks keeps keeps this up and, like, it doesn't look like he's slowing down, he's going to be a real contender when it comes to the Olympic trials. Everybody runs faster during the Olympic year. Yeah. It's, only, it's not 2024 yet, but it dang near. So you already starting to see it. You already starting to see it, man. And you know everybody got the everyone got the Olympic trials on their mind, bro. I don't care if you in college or if you even in high school. You thinking about the Olympics? Yeah, right now, right now. And I think this guy too as well. I don't know if he's coming back to NAU next year. He's running like he doesn't want to come back to NAU, and he's trying to get that contract, trying to get that biggest bag, and get on an Olympic team. Because Nico Young, I know we talked about Grand Blanks and Parker Valby. They have great performances. But, like, the Nico Young had the best performance out of Came every back run, Yeah, coming back and running. 7, 737 for the five for the 3K, number three all time. Then coming back with a 13.22. And the win. And his heat. Oh, he want to see, man. I, bro, I, I was watching watching that 3K. I didn't watch the whole race, but seeing the clips, I don't know. He looked like he was, like, he looked like he getting into his, his grown man, his grown man body. Like, he looks stronger um he looks like you when you think back to like him in high school he was just you you would see like the arms kind of crossing yeah. a little bit more i'm watching him now he looks he strong got, coming he looks strong he looked like he got a little bit more a knee lift like you oh, know what yeah. i'm saying mm -hmm. his his hips are under him like i don't know he may have gotten every time i see him i'm like did you get taller bro and i'm like this might this might be we might see something something different from the boy Nico this year. I, I, what would I, he would have ran in that race? I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was in that race, and I think it's even bigger that like he got the win too in that in that three k. Like be able to do that and get the win and do the and get the win too. And like he had to go around some people. Like it wasn't like he just let start to finish. Like he was battling and like be able to get that win. And like, he's shown that before, like when he ran that race in APU, when he ran that 5K, I remember this earlier this season, like he he's able to battle too. So it's going to be really interesting. I feel like when we get to a lot, of, which it always is, but I really feel like this class of college kids, like in the 5K of Nico, Graham, and then Parker Balby, Caitlin Tui, if she does the 15 or the five, and then uh, who's who's Park, Park, Parker Valby? Not Parker Valby. Graham Blanks, the girl from Harvard. I can't remember her name right now. But uh, I feel like a lot of these. Oh, the 15. Yeah. A lot of these kids are going to be contending like pretty. They're going to be contending for the 15. Like they're going to be contending at the Olympic trials. And it's weird because like a lot of I feel like a lot of our distance runners are young. So like they're not that far of age. Like I don't feel like a lot of these kids are that far of age from Sinclair Johnson. You know what I mean? From a Grant Fisher. It's not That's like true. far we're away, not. but like they're going to be in that conversation for sure. We're going to be talking about Nico Young. Can he make this 5K team when we get to, when we get to June or July or whenever it looks trials is. This past weekend, USATF Wing Awards, we talked about it on the podcast, about our voting about our process we got the vote like low-key our vote went in last minute i'm not even gonna cap i honestly don't really remember who i voted for Me, wait. what do you mean 
You voted for Hershey Carey and Noah. Nah, sure. bro. I think I, I wrote oh, you for put, Ryan. Did you put you put Ryan. Oh, okay. I put Ryan Krauser, bro. Okay. Come on, man. Come okay. on, man. Best shot putter of all time. Best shot putter of all time. Honestly, I think he should have still. Wait, j- did I put Ryan? Yeah, I did. I did. It was just for the Jesse Owens and Jackie Jr. Yeah, I put Ryan Krauser. I'm pretty sure I put Ryan Krauser. That ain't a bad pick, bro. That ain't a bad pick. It's not a bad. It's not bad. But briefly going over the wing awards, then we'll talk about it. USA's performer of the year should carry uh, USATF like championships. Performer of the year, USA's performer of the year. We had Shakari Richardson and then Cravant Charleston both won it. The USATF uh, World Champs Performer of the Year went to Laulonga Tafsonga Collins. Uh, the Jesse Owens Award went to Noah Lyles. The Jackie Joyner Award went to Shakari Richardson. And then Coach of the Year was Dennis Mitchell, who coaches uh, Shakari, Twanisha Terry, um, and Star Athletics, whole, man, whole bunch of athletes. Kenny, Kenny Benderick on, on that, uh, Kyrie King. And a whole, whole lot of other people. Um, Aaron, what you think about the Wing Awards? We had a lot of motivational speeches. I'll from say the night. this. Yeah. And yeah, no, I, what I liked about it this year, I, did you, do you remember seeing these speeches last year? Uh, I don't. Honestly, honestly, I, I don't remember seeing the speeches, but like I've seen speeches in before. I don't mean, was this live stream? Usually they do a live stream like on USATF TV. Like honestly, I didn't see as much um, promotion for it as normal. I didn't. I don't know. I maybe I wasn't paying attention last year, but I just like. I think it was highlighted well, at least on Instagram. I love seeing the speeches of Noah. I love seeing uh, the speeches of of Shanti and Shakari. You know. Um, I don't know. And the and the red carpet. It looked like it looked like a really cool event. Actually, I want to shout out uh Sue McDonald. Sue McDonald, um, she won um the USATF like Masters Award. And she actually trains out here in Santa Barbara uh with me and the with the and the squad sometimes. So she was she was out there, she was bro, looking she good in her dressing. Huh? huh? She be smacking you, huh, bro? Stop, man. Come on, man. What you mean? It's okay. I'm just saying. Nah, nah, fam. It ain't like that. It ain't like that. But shout out to her. That's the homie. That's the homie. So that was cool. It was cool to see her. And I, I so I'm going to give, I want to give USA TF kudos. It looked like everyone just had a really good time. I love seeing everybody dress up. You know, I mean, Noah's, Noah's uh, speech about being bigger than the sport. You know, we hear it all the time from him. But it was cool to see it on that stage in that environment with all these track athletes trying to inspire them. And same with with Shakari talking about she knows why she here, why she here, she feels her purpose. And you know, even Noah and Shakari are both very young people, so it's just cool that in track, like we, re- I really just feel like you get to see these athletes grow from so young and and see them mature. So it's just cool as someone that is like you know, somewhat a part of that community uh, to see that highlighted and celebrate it, you know? Can I stir the pots, bro? Like, uh, I'm not trying to be, you feel me? I'm not trying to, like, be a negative Nancy or you feel me or nothing or be, be negative. Ain't do what you go. Do what you got to do. I I, I want to give, like, some recommendations, honestly. Like, I just feel like I've been hearing the same story for about the past six months, bro. I feel like we've been talking about the same thing for six months. <laughs> like can we can we move on like i don't i don't know you feel me i feel like honestly you, you're I, over it that's how i felt last year but keep going like I'm, it's not that i'm over it i'm just all like bro like i understand no you want to transcend the sport and like you doing it too i see him with his podcast he was reacting to, to some races with joseph and Bule. like that was dope that's cool like he doing it like kudos to you Shakari, I understand you back and you better. Like you're not just back, you better. I'm all like, Shakari, you need to copyright that and put that on a t-shirt before I do. Like no cap, because like you need to put that on a t-shirt straight up. Uh, and this, sure. I'm, I'm just all like, bro, like why are we still talking about this? Like, like we already knew like what the outcome was going to be. Like this just like why is this in December? Like literally, we're about to have. We're, we're running indoor track again. Like, people are running indoor track, and this is, like, the end of the season. Like, everybody's training for the new season. This does it. So you wouldn't say this revitalizes you and gets you hyped up and makes you think back to when you watch the carry from the ninth lane <laughs> go and win when Noah 
one. It led the team to the win in the four by one. Bro, who you cares know? about last year, bro? It's about now. In it's still 2023. Nah, bro, it's 2024. The season already started. We in train. We in boot camp right now. We training for the fall and everybody dressing up, playing dress up. Like, come on, man. Nah. No, I'm just playing. I'm not, I'm not that serious about it, but and it's like, bro, like the season, the season's over. Like it's been over. That's where that's just my only issue. And even just like, and like, I don't I don't know why it wasn't maybe there was a live stream, but maybe I just didn't see it. But there usually is a live stream for for these award ceremonies and people can see it. And like I just want, I don't know why too. Like, why was it announced beforehand that like Shikari and Noah Lyles were gonna get the award? Like, yeah, why is there no suspense it, to it and we can bring the nominees in there? Like, I want to see Ryan Krauser, I want to hear his story more. And I, I want it to be like a couple, like a oh, two weeks or three weeks after. Oh, you actually could have watched it. It was on a what's it called? The USATF uh Runner Space Plus flow track. Okay, bro. Okay. <laughs> Jokes, bro. No, just kidding. You had to subscribe, bro. <laughs> I was a to joke, bro. I'll be serious, bro. <laughs> but they nah, could. Bro. But that would be cool, low key, if it was on there, but you didn't have to pay. But if they did put it on one of those, you know, so you know, people would be listening. If it was on one of those streaming services for free, let me let me put y'all on game. Let me put y'all on put game. Put that on Peacock, bro. Peacock would be fire. But if I'm just saying, on what is the USATF USATF TV? Put that on USATF TV for free, and then you get people to get on there. And then I don't know what you do. You do something where they got to sign up and they get to watch that for free, and then they forget to pay. And now you got them. No, I'm just kidding. But then you could just <laughs> are you, that's how you can start advertising and selling it to them though. You know what I'm uh, saying, though? Bro, I got Put that you. on there. Honestly, I got you, bro. And honestly, maybe maybe they just need some Have more a host? funding. They need some we, more funding or something. Like, we'll host it. We'll, me and Joshua, USATF. Well, I wasn't going to say us. I wasn't going to say us. But like, oh. this, this is what you do. Put this put this awards. We need just need to be a celebration. Like, relax. Like, I know they've been seeing each other all year. But, like, we need to relax, celebrate the athletes, give them press and everything and last celebration on last hoorah uh september 16th 17th was diamond league final let's do that let's do this at the beginning of october like the first week of october let's do this award ceremony have it on peacock have it be hosted by you can have it be hosted by brandon marshall bro brandon marshall introduced noah lyles he can host the whole thing maybe even get kevin hart kevin hart likes track get chad ochocinco chad ochocinco i'm pretty sure we're do it Get Ryan Clark, get the pivot. I don't know. Get somebody like that to host it. Put it on Peacock. People are going to tune in and watch that. We have that final celebration in October. We're fresh off of Diamond League. We're fresh off of World Championships. I'm still hyped and into it. And then right now, we don't even got to talk. Like, we're just excited and, like, going into the next year. Like, put that My on. only thing with that, I think that's cool. My only thing is it's only with U.S. athletes. So I just don't know how big it will be that's why i think it could be on one of the smaller streaming ser services what but do you mean? like it's P we the us the best though come on that's true we got us champions I mean, it is only the top it is only the top athletes that are really receiving awards and it's another way especially in the olympic year we just missed out on a big opportunity to really you know start telling the stories of our athletes into a wider audience because it was on instagram i think the instagram was good and i think it got a lot of views but like i think there are some people which you with they have to have a performance on there you know get a performance on there have yeah. a panel of people sitting down and then yeah you have a or just like the SPs or something yeah have somebody funny up there like you know doing hosting i would love to see them all come out in their red carpets you know, there's a lot of opportunity if you do it a certain way. Yeah, I just feel like the conversation, like the stories of like, maybe I need to just like sit down and like really like watch the real. Like I, I didn't really watch it, but like I just feel like fire. Talking, we've been talking about the same thing. Like I feel like we've just been dragging it. Like I want to see something different. I, I've seen, we've seen the stuff different from like Noah, but I haven't seen that much different from Shakari, like to be honest. Like I know, did. but you can't put it on the athletes like you didn't see. What they supposed to say? Like, what? What is she? I know I'm not putting it on them, to but, say. I'm just, but I'm just saying that's why I don't really like nothing's happening, bro. You know how? Guess how like, much? Guess how? Carry to come on the podcast? 
guess how many guess how many views her reel got of her speech, bro? Bro, probably many? like five million, bro. Shakira Richardson. It's one point nine million. Okay, I know, but I'm just saying I want to see something different from Shakira now. Like, bro, you been like you gotta wait till next year. You gotta wait till you gotta wait till the season start. She'll have a new saying. <laughs> She really do need to copyright that though, don't you think? Should I DM her? No, no, no. Put that on a shirt. I'll buy that quick. Put that on a shirt. I'll buy that you. quick. That'd be I'm hard. A, I, I'm gonna text T and tell her. I'm gonna text T and tell For her. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I'm surprised Nike hasn't made that a campaign though. I'm nah, sure it might be real. it might be in the works, bro. To be honest, Nike, I'm for the Olympics, that, that could be a whole campaign. Just watch. You heard it. Honestly, here bro, first. can we just have Max Eagle's job? Like, I'm sorry, Max. Like, I'm filming. Like, I think we could do his job. I don't know if we can, but like, I think we got some good ideas. I know that man getting a bag, so I love to have that job. <laughs> Come on, Max. <laughs> let me put, let me let me run it for a year, Max. You get some you get some rest. You feel me? People on your back too. You feel me? Just let us let us take it. Let us take it. We run with it. Shoot. Come on, man. Come on. But uh, as we get out of here, bro, as we start wrapping up, I want to know, Aaron, you were at TRE. This past weekend, so a lot of stuff went down. You feel me? The running event, the premier trade show for running industry professionals. Bro, where's running going to be in the next five years? I'm just playing. But like, <laughs> kind of just like, what was your experience like? And I think that is an interesting question. What was what was the one of the most interesting like industry improvements or things that are happening in the running industry that we're going to see? For me personally, the biggest thing happening in the ring industry is um, RIDC. It's the movement, bro. The fact that they were able... So RIDC brought out 25 um, retail managers, black retail managers to TRE. And if you guys don't know, the rain event is basically um, a conference where brands kind of uh, come up and they set up all these booths and then like store owners will come to see the new shoes, have sales meetings, see innovation, network, all of that. And I mean, I always am an advocate for people like transitioning from uh, retail to the corporate brand space because there's just more uh, upward mobility um, in that. And when you get, when you're a person of color, you're black and you get into the, you get into that world, you notice that the higher you go up, the less, uh, black people you are and then there's just certain things that there's certain things that you will go through as a black person that you won't be able to relate to anyone who's around you so and that's even at the retail level that's at anywhere in life being a black person so the RIDC bringing those 25 black retail employees that's going to change that could change people's lives that can open their eyes to a world when I worked at like Sports Chalet you know, I didn't, I didn't know like half of the jobs that are available. There's so many, like, there's so many jobs out there. I'm not saying you're gonna become a mil millionaire, but they're livable. Like it's not livable, you know, always working in these stores, but there's so many brands, brand jobs. And like, like I said, you could continue, you know, to find your place and move up, um, you know, and like the biggest thing I looked at when I first started working at Hoka is just like, you know, you have people when you're at working, when you're working somewhere and you have people that are having babies, you know, getting married and buying houses. That's a good sign. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good sign. So the fact that uh, RIDC was able to put the pressure on all of these brands um, and to put the money where their mouth is and to bring these people together, even though it was only 20, 25, that's a strong 25. You know, black people, you know, we love seeing each other succeed, talking to each other. So that 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 was just powerful to me. And I think um, regardless of how many black people are in the running industry, I think that if we can just create a culture within the running industry, then that will help us advance and not just be at the bottom, move up into places, network, because there are, there are, it doesn't matter how many, there's black people, there's black people in this space doing um, really cool things that are really talented and, you know, they just need an opportunity. So to me, 
because to me, that was the most powerful thing. And then outside of that, I'll also say shout out to just like, you know, I just also realized, man, like, you know, I had people coming up to me. Like people remember like old live podcasts that we did like in New York and even sometimes just someone like, oh, like I know that person. And that's always like flattering to me. So anybody that said what's up, like I appreciate you because like I really don't. I don't walk around like thinking that everybody knows who two black runners is and knows what the podcast is and stuff like that. So like, that's always, a uh, that's always surprising. That's always surprising. And it makes me feel good when people like recognize me for like, not just having a podcast, but the, for it being like good work for it being like good work, being like helpful work in the world. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, but yeah. yeah. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy with all those connections you made. I'm sure, you made a lot of new, new friends. Like in networking, I know Caleb was out there too with you. I'm sure, you got some uh, new followers on Instagram or maybe even Strava. They're gonna be DMing any of those new uh... Strava. That was my... <laughs> hey, that was but my... LinkedIn. I'm all about LinkedIn. Add me on LinkedIn though. I'm really about that. Everybody out there, I was like, bro, put me on LinkedIn, bro. Like that's really look, come on. Let's connect on there. But the Strava. No, that's crazy. There's messaging on Strava now. Like, hey, did, we about to talk about the talk about that. The Strava, mm. Strava there. Didn't Strava? Strava's booth, usually but... they probably were. I I was really honestly I was stuck at my booth like doing meetings a lot, so I didn't get to walk around as much as they did last year. But I know last year Strava was there, and I actually went to like a a talk thing. So I'm sure they were there in some type of capacity. But I think that's I think it is cool that there's messaging. I think that's huge for people in run groups you know because like instead of i mean you could just you could have a run club and then you could set an event you'd be like yo when are you running da 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 but but we gotta talk about the stalkers man we got about to talk about those stalker runner boys y'all weird as hell y'all know y'all weird boy but you can hide your you can hide your start and your end but that's the only thing i'm like hey you know what I'm saying? Is the stalker-ish level going to go up? They just got to make sure that they on that because people saying where they at. On, you know, we giving out a lot of info. You know what I'm saying? You know where we run every day. So I'll end with this because I'm just, because there may be because people on here to be on Strava. I'm I'm curious just thinking about, let's think, let's think ahead. You feel me? What's Strava etiquette in the DMs and the messages? So like, say I just ran a race. I ran with this dude for a long time in the race and now now i could see like oh or even if you run any race you can now see like different people that ran on that same course as you from strava like you can have yeah. like you it can have like you together yeah that groups you together if i message that person like hey bro like we ran together like great job is that weird you think that, is that weird or you think is that totally normal is that like what that's used for is that what the the tool is going to be used for uh I think it can be. I don't know, but I don't know about. I guess, the, yeah, that's cool if it's a if it's like not somebody you trying to get at low key. <laughs> I don't know. It's the same etiquette as the DM because you could say that, but they'd be more weird. I guess is it more weird on Instagram if you went on a run and then you found that person and you're like, "Yo, I saw you on a run today." No, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. Why would you say that? That would be your opening line. I saw you on a run today. That's insane. But you would, that's what you would say on Strava. But I guess maybe on Maker. No, I literally just ran a race with you, though. I, like, I was running side by side, and, like, we bonded for a second. What's the intention behind the message, though? That's the real... That's, that's what it's all about. What is the intention behind the message? Are you trying to get something out of it? You know? Because, like, that's when it gets weird. Sheesh. Sheesh. I don't know, but there's definitely gonna be people shooting shots in the DMs at Strava, bro, for sure. Wishing them best of luck. Sure. Wishing them best of luck. I hope we get some, some uh, stories. You feel me? Some uh, Strava DM stories. That that would be good. That'd be good. That'd be no good. No context I'm, will be on it. I'm sure. <laughs> I already seen no context post something. He said, "Everybody, do not abuse the Strava messages and like posting like requests for no context." But hey, really, just don't stalk people. <laughs> that's the only thing just don't stalk nobody you can message just don't stalk nobody and we good like that's the only thing 
No, that's a good place to end. We'll see y'all next week on the Two Black Runners podcast. I don't know. We may have something a little bit different for y'all next week, but I guess we'll see or just be a regular thing. But we'll be at Foot Locker this week, so stick around. Make sure you guys are following us on Instagram at Two Black Runners or at Runner Report and see a lot of our content. We'll see y'all next week. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Thank you.